In this video, we're going to look at how to import joint data and loads from a CSV file in DES Foundation. And a question you might be asking yourself is, why would I want to use a CSV file? So imagine the situation where you want to start designing your foundations for your superstructure. You'll need to tell S Foundation the location of the, of the superstructure's reaction loads and the values of these loads. And this can be done directly by linking the superstructure's geometry and the analysis results from an S-frame analysis model into S Foundation. But what if you don't have access to S-frame analysis? It's also very easy to import this data using CSV files that contain this following data from your superstructure. Support joint locations, load cases, load combinations, reaction loads. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up your CSV file data format so you can quickly get your foundations built in S Foundation. So we're going to jump into S Foundation and I have a blank model opened up. And what we want to do is we want to add the data from our superstructure will help us design our foundation quickly. So if I go to the run menu and then go to the wizards menu, underneath this we have the option to import CSV supports with loads. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to open up a dialog that's showing me the first step of a multi-step process. First we're going to look for the path of the location where our joint data will be stored. You notice here that it has several different columns, the headers listed here, and the corresponding data that will be found within the Excel file. And I can browse to this location. If I just click on this ellipsis button here, I can browse to the location where my CSV data is stored. So if I click on this folder here, I have a CSV file that's called joints.csv. And I'm going to read this in and actually have it open here on my screen so I can compare the two side by side. So you can see here each one of these rows represents a column header in my CSV file and the underlying data represents the information that S Foundation will need to represent the joints. So we have the name, the ID, and the X, Y, and Z coordinates of that joint. So I'm going to click the next button and the next step is to import our load cases. Again, we have the column headers listed here in these different rows. These are the column headers for our CSV file, so the ID of the load case, the name of the load case, and whether or not self-weight effects are included. And if I browse to this file, once again, if I click on this CSV file, loadcases.csv, and it doesn't have to be named that, you can call it whatever you want. I just did this for simplicity. We can see the data that within this loadcases.csv file. And the format is really what's important. So we need to make sure that the data under ID, name, and self-weight that S Foundation is going to be reading in is consistent with these values and our CSV format. So we have the same values here. I'm going to go next again. And this process we're bringing in our load combination data. So we have a lot more information uh, because we have multiple load cases and their associated factors to represent that load combination, as well as the ID and the name of the load combination. So I have this file open as well. And you can see it's a larger file, but S Foundation can bring it in without issue. We have seven different load combinations, each with their own unique ID. And that's what's listed here. We also have the name of each load combination, the case that's being factored in each scenario, and the associated factor. And this will read in all this data from this CSV file. And lastly, we have the loads. The actual loads that populate are load cases and combinations and are applied to the joints that we've imported. So we have the load ID, the load case ID, the load case that that load belongs to, the joint that it's attached to, and then the magnitudes in the force and moment degrees of freedom. And just to show you what this looks like, this is, a, again, a larger spreadsheet. Uh, we have 20 different load IDs. And the low cases IDs are shown here as well. So we have four different joints. So that's why we have joints IDs 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we have four loads per low case. And the magnitudes of each one of these joint loads is shown here. So I'll click Next. And then finally, I'm going to create a new file. I'll click Finish. And on the surface, it doesn't look like anything exciting has happened. But if we click on the Finite Element Model view here, we can see that we've imported these four joint locations just as we saw uh, from those spreadsheets. I can also look at the reaction loads and see what those reaction loads uh, look like from this perspective. 
In the cases and combinations uh, tab here, I can also filter out the low cases of combinations that I would like to run during a code check. And I'm just going to look at the low combinations for this example. And I'll add a couple of the default isolated footings. I'm just going to add them to the bottom of these joints here. So those reaction loads that are applied on top and all their low cases and combinations will be applied to the foundations. Now I'm just using the default isolated footing, but here if I go to the physical element view, I can see the different data that's represented within this. Maybe the object view would be a little bit more telling of what this looks like in the real world. We also have rebar data underneath, which again, I'm going with the defaults, but I could adjust if I needed to. And the same thing goes for soil. We have soil underneath our foundations that represents the stiffness of the ground supporting it. And I could always modify the stiffness or the height of the soil as I need to. I'm just going to go ahead and run an analysis in the code check. And this foundation is going to run a nonlinear static analysis on all of my load cases and combinations that I've selected to run. It's going to be able to do uh, a nonlinear analysis to account for the compression only springs underneath the foundation. So if there are any instances of uplift, it will accurately account for those. And once we're done, we're able to see the results. I'll just expand the results here on the right hand side. We can see a high level summary of the results where we're looking at each individual code check that's been run and the associated demand and capacity for the governing low case or combination. We can also view the same information graphically. If I want to look at, for example, soil bearing, I can look at the soil bearing pressure tool and see that information displayed in a more graphical representation. And what we're able to see from this is it's very easy for us to go from a superstructure model that was represented by different CSV files, import that into S Foundation, apply our foundations to the bottom of those joints, and then run a code check and analysis to get the pass fail status and all the different results from the code check for our, our foundations very quickly.